Yeah, what's up? My name is Severman and you're watching O5. For today's video, I've created a stamped record style bass house drop. But yeah, be before we start to explain anything, let's just listen to the drop that I've created. So let's go. So as you might be able to tell, this drop is very Julian Jordan inspired and um, all the samples that I've used and the presets that will be showing you in this little tutorial are from the new O5 Banghouse pack. Some are also from the, the stamped pack from O5. Yeah, so let's let's start with the drums. So basically at the top of this FLP, we have all the, the drums, the like some steps, etc. So these individually sound like that. So I basically got this kick right here at the top and then I layered this one with a yeah, kind of pre-clap on every second kick drum to really create this nice groove. And then like in, in the second quarter of the drop we have some hi-hats. So I basically have this drum loop and then I layered this open hi-hat to it and with those it sounds like that. already sounds pretty cool and I actually didn't really do any like processing to the samples that I have here at the top because like one cool thing about the samples from the O5 packs you know there you can just direct them into your DAW and you don't need to do any fancy processing so they're ready to use and you just need to make sure that you pick the right sounds so if you're able to find those right sounds and to put them together you already have a really cool um, yeah sound that which don't need to be processed all of so it's basically just about setting the levels right and uh, yeah then we have some some steps right here so it's also very like common for for bass also have, like a huge step at the beginning of each bar so i basically layer it two steps one shots these sound like that and this second one and then i did some pitching over here it sounds pretty cool also it gives a bit more like yeah kind of a melodic vibe to them um then i layered this crash also to them and this crash helps to kind of add some more high end to those steps then we have this vocal shot that i implemented so on that one, um, I think I just put some, some delay. Yeah, a little bit of EQing, like getting rid of the lows in order to kind of make room for the bass line, you know, to not have a clash with the bass line. Then we have some fruity delay. And with this one, yeah, use this for, for the delay. So the cool thing about this one is you can really kind of nail or like dial in your settings for the um, ping pong. So for instance, with this one, I set up a ping pong delay so it basically goes from the left speaker to the right so it repeats that and can really like dial in your settings really nice for example i also activated a high pass filter so you don't need to um, add another filter after the delay to kind of have this filter delay sound um, so yeah, i think it's that's pretty handy this one and obviously then we have some sidechain just a bit of like nicky romero kickstart sidechain yeah so that's this sound that i was talking about and then I also added kind of another um, one shot and this also just, you know, creates some more variation in the drop. You know, again, creates some variation because if you introduce new stuff and then you keep that stuff in there for like the entire time, it can also get quite boring again. So that's why, I, you know, I put them out again and then in the fourth quarter of the drop, I have them in again. So it creates a really nice variation. To, I'm also like call and response type of vibe in the drop which is always really cool but then let me show you the bass line so the bass line solely sounds like that so for the bass line i used 
some serum layers. So yeah, I got three layers right here. This is the first one. So it's basically a really nice sub, which, you know, really gives that drive to the drop and that nice low end that, that you want. Um, then we have the second layer. This one is kind of more of a slappy bass. And then I layered one more sound to the bass line. So this one is like a Reese type of bass. And this third layer helps to really fill out the frequency spectrum for the bass line because it also adds some high end to, to the sound because yeah the first two layers didn't really have any high end. So yeah, that's basically the bass line. Then I used the third layer also for the Reese fill that I have in this track. And this Reese fill, it sounds like that. So I basically created like two notes, the, the D and the F. And then what's special about this one is kind of yeah, the processing that I did on this one. So first of all, we have quite crazy EQing. So I really boosted those kind of 200 Hertz to really kind of create this resonating um, character for this re-space. Then we have some distortion to really make it like crunchy, really nice, give it a lot of energy. Then what's probably most important about that one is the um, effector plugin from FS Studio. So for this one, I used the Vox and with the Vox, I think you can basically also create resonance in your sound so this one is really cool because it really gives that special um, character to to the bass I would say so what I did is I, I automated the X and the um, Y knob in this one as you can see and with those two knobs I'm basically shifting like, the resonance frequency and um, yeah so these basically create this nice character so without the two automations was not like that. I think it just gives him a nicer, more interesting character. And then I have a Camel Crusher, so just to add some more distortion to it to really kind of make this Reese feel fat. Then we have some Stereo Enhancer. And with this one, I automated the um, stereo separation knob. And what I did with this one is I have it mono at the beginning, and then it goes wide again to 50%. Then again with the second note, I have it mono and then also go kind of wide again. So it kind of makes the bass appear to, to get bigger because at the beginning I have it mono and then it's being automated to kind of spread out to the sides, which I think also creates a really cool effect. So without the stereo enhancer, it would sound like that. So like that, it's basically only on the sides. And again, with this one, it just makes it a bit more interesting, I would say. Then we have a second one, and I only use this one for basic volume automation. So that's pretty much it with like the Reese fill. And then, yeah, last but not least, we have our lead sound. And for this lead sound, I used only one sample, I think. You know, with this one, it already sounded really full. And basically, this was all that I needed for this drop. So yeah, the lead sound sounds like that. And um, then also what I did is I kind of created a B part where I change up the melody. Also to just keep the track interesting to create variation. And also yeah, I did that with the bass line. It's also like with the bass line, I have um, like different notes in this section right here. So let's check out the processing that I did for the lead sound. So I have this one rooted to the first channel. And on here we have some EQing. Um, so that's very kind of precise EQing. It just depends on like how you want it to have it sit in the mix. So I just felt like boosting the 1.7k hertz a bit, boosting the high end a little bit and taking out those lower mids a little bit. A little too present. So that's why I kind of dipped that down a little bit. Yeah, then we have again a stereo enhancer to make it a, a little less wide because it was already pretty wide and we are without the processing. Yeah, so then I have the Fruity Reverb 2 just to, you know, add a bit of kind of room to, to the lead sound because without reverb, it would sound obviously too dry and not really natural. So just a little bit of like um, decay time, like 1.2 seconds, nothing really crazy with this reverb. Then I have this OTT to just kind of compress it a little more 
and to kind of you know give it a little bit more energy because OTT is a really nice tool for that. And um, yeah, then last but not least, we have some sidechain again by um, the Nick Romero Kickstarter plugin, and that's pretty much it, I think. Actually, we have one more vocal that I added to to the fill parts. So this is also from the stamped pack. So this one sounds like that. So what I did on that one is I have a pitcher and with this one I'm basically kind of making it appear to have a lower pitch. You know, I'm basically affecting the format pitch so it kind of makes it appear lower, if that makes sense. So without the processing, the vocal sounds like that. Ten bands in the bank. Then with the pitcher on, it sounds like that. Ten bands in the bank. It's not affecting it too much, but it's just doing it, you know, in, in a very subtle way, I would say. Ten bands in the bank. Yeah, then we have the, the fruity, what's it called, flangers, I think it's pronounced. So this one really helped to kind of make the vocal um, white in a sort of natural way, I thought. In the then we have some EQing, so just kind of um, reducing the lows a little bit, boosting the highs a bit. Again, OTT to kind of compress it a bit. Then we have reverb also on this one. So what's special about this reverb is that I gave it a sort of metallic character. So like how I did this, I reduced the size and the diffusion in this one all the way. And also as you can see in this little window right here, it kind of shows you how it sounds. So if you were sitting like in this triangle room, a reverb would sound like it looks now. And usually when you have the size normal and diffusion like that, it would kind of be a room like this where you don't have um, you know, walls creating weird resonances like in a normal bedroom or whatever. But actually reducing those two really helps to create this metallic vibe um, for, for the reverb. So yeah, that's pretty much it with this little bass house style, um, stamp style bass house drop. All right, so that's it. I hope you liked this little tutorial. If you did so, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next 05 video. Bye.